Um, many thanks for inviting, I say me today, but of course it's not me. It's a group of us who are involved in many of the things that Liz has just mentioned. I mean, I could have said, kicked off by saying, we're looking to make a difference. We're looking to make sure that people understand what the elderly can do, what they have to give. And we have started going about it in an unusual way. And I would like to backtrack, first of all, to say how we came together. I'd then like to say a little about what we've done over the last few months, because most of it is on the net, or it's in our periodical The Record, or it's on Twitter, etc., etc. But what I will do is I will go through what we've done purely with a geographical intonation as to where it was, and give you the idea of what we did at that. But it won't be any length, because we haven't got a lot of time today. And then I want to concentrate a little bit about what we'll be doing in October, perhaps a bit of November, um, and inviting you all to join with us in what we're doing, and in particular one item which I'll come to later. Um, very interested in many of the things that Liz mentioned, and interestingly enough, March 2020 is when our is up for review or probably cut. But to go back to the beginning, in April this year, some 15 or so people assembled in Eccles, in the gateway to Eccles, having been touted, asked to join, or spotted an advertisement which suggest, suggested that people would become reporters and would be looking to change the ideas of the younger generation have of the older generation. So, some 15 of us turned up, as I say, in Eccles. We were met by two people who were from the organization, I need to read it out, from Yellow Jigsaw, who are a PR organization, and they told us or gave us an indication of what we were going to do. We did have a few things in common with volunteers. We were all in our own sphere looking to assist, help, build, run organizations associated with the elderly. And of course, we're all elderly ourselves. We were, just like you, looking to say that the elderly were a credit, not a debit, a plus, not a minus, a contributor, not a taker. And that given the opportunity, they could live lives to the full and be an asset to society. The two members of the PR Social Enterprise Company were Kirsty Day and Grace Dye. And they fronted us and they explained that we were part of a 10.2 million Greater Manchester level programme aimed at creating an age-friendly place and empowering people to live fulfilling lives as they age. A campaign funded by the National Lottery, managed by GM Centre for Voluntary Action, by the other jigsaw with Age UK as a partner. I have to say all that, I have to give the plug to everybody. Um, Kirsty and Grace explained that the plan was to challenge the stereotypes associated with the elder. And the idea was born that we would do this, and you mentioned something similar a few minutes ago, Liz, by sharing stories from all walks 
to life, and those stories showed that elderly can live a life in their own way and with the benefit of others. It sounded fine, but of course we're 15 people from Greater Manchester, all parts of it. And the next sentence was the one that surprised us all, shocked some of us, I think. We would become reporters. We would meet once a month in a newsroom. We would lead the campaign. And at that stage, it was called Through the Eyes of Older People. And I'll refer to that in a minute. We would decide what we would in, who we would interview, where we would interview, when we would interview, and what we would interview about. And I'm sure you can see us all looking around at one another in the room at the time. Kirsty and Grace would be present, but they would lead. But they wouldn't tell us what to do. That was our job. One of the first decisions that we did was to say that we didn't like the title. It wasn't punchy enough, and after deliberations and suggestions, we decided on talking about my generation. We pinched from a certain song, and we, of course, then automatically, if you like, realized that following on from that, any publication should be in the record. And as a logo, an old fashioned, you know what I mean, <laughs> an old fashioned record. And that's how we set off. For the next two months, as individuals, we spent time in our own neck of the woods looking around at individual people or individual groups that were a positive in our area that were showing that they <coughs> were able to be a credit to the older <coughs> generation. And we came back together and we talked about the various things. And so gradually, gradually, we each of us came up with an idea that we touted around the rest of the group. And off we went. And I want to now give you some indication, excuse me, of some of the things that we came up with. You will find a copy of the record, the first record. There is a copy in the room over there, but there's not many, not many of them. But on every table, before I started, I placed a copy of the last page. Another that one, that one, in which all the contact numbers will be shown. And you may wish, as individuals, to take a copy of that Twitter, email, etc., etc., and then follow up any of the ideas that I give out now that we've got in either of these two on the record. That's the first the second. And you will see that what we set up to do was to find individuals who had a story to tell and were making, making waves in their area. We've got an 87-year-old boxer. Walkers. People who spend their time helping others by dancing, only old people dancing. And what we have, and these are some of the areas that we've covered in our productions. In June, we covered the Age UK volunteering event. Also in June, inspiring women, Eid party, sharing in Oldham. In Bolton, inspirational stories and keeping connected with your community. 
Trans Vegas, sharing experience of being a trans woman, a stage performance. If any of these ring a bell with you, then I suggest you find more detail on the net or on Twitter by going through the um, line that I've sh shipped up on the table. In July, coverage of the Active Aging Festival in Wigan, group interviews of walking football in Ashton, the Manchester Weekend Walkers, stories of how people get involved in success stories. August, Aging in the Netherlands, Visit to Henshaw Society for the Blind, looking to see how blind people, again, in one of the written reviews on the record. We interviewed NHC Retirement, and of course we covered Manchester Pride with uh, interviews, with uh, video, and I think um, a radio connection as well. We've had group chats on retirement in various places in this, through September. Reported in Oldham, were on the radio, and we've done the walkers. Coming up, and this is where I want to spend a little bit more time, we've had Salford Arts Museum yesterday, my friend Chris was there, and through October, a poem every day by the Tilsley Writers Group, based on topics of ageing. And again, you can access through the net. We've, and that was interesting, that we've got commence no more wrinkly hands, and I heard that phrase <coughs> used a few minutes ago, so again, in tandem. And an 84-year-old and what he does in Bolton. And the one I really want to bring to your attention is that on, in October, on the 26th of October, we have got a living library at Manchester Central Library. For those of you who don't know where the living library is, it's where there is a book with a name on it, with an individual, and you go in, you look at that book, you say, I like the sound of that content of that book. Pick it up. Lo and behold, in a room, an annex, an alcove, is an individual who will speak about what's in that book. And that is on the 26th of October. We'd invite any, many of you who wish to go, to go along and participate. We've got a motorcycle article in the making, and we've got uh, an interview with an individual, 70 year old, who many, many things in the urban area. And I think from the waving that I've just had, that I'm not able to take any questions because I'm running out of time. So thank you very much for your attention today. There are some of our books in the back room, but not many, unfortunately. And I would like to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, continue any information you want via the usual network. Thank you very much indeed.